it's your pap boy in full dork mode uh zero dork 30 i've been in the deepest darkest corners of my cave it always seems to get a little weird when you're doing the contract sliders you know it, 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 it just happens i don't know but i i got them hey okay? uh, no worries and, and by the end of this video you're gonna have them too all right it's the settings to give us the most realistic results we can get in 2k21 which is just gonna make the game more fun more interesting for us of course so let's go from the top um, and by the way um, this video right here that's the only place you're gonna find these sliders I'm about to give you that's just for right now that will change they'll be downloadable soon um, and I'll let you know of course but here we go we got uh, the ones at the top here these can only be set at the start um, of course we're gonna leave the salary cap um, and the hard cap on All right, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the soft cap up a little bit to 114 then I'm gonna put the hard cap down just a little to 190 okay nothing drastic but since the luxury tax doesn't do anything real we can use these settings to help give us just the right amount of real restrictions and that's important because it's gonna force teams to make some you know to have to make some real decisions when building their roster that's the way it should be like it is in real life that's a lot of the fun of it and I want to keep that experience in the game you know as much as possible now with the salary cap inflation rate we're just going for realism here so of course you know we want the cap to grow just like it would in real life right and you know it didn't take that much testing to see that in the game with it on default at 50 there's a little too much inflation grows a little too much too fast so we just want to bring this down to 43 okay we're good there let's get to salary expectations most important thing step number one was to find the right combination for the top three sliders here and that's because these three they all they don't like operate in a vacuum they all affect each other okay so if we go uh 55 for the min rating uh and 62 for the max rating that'll take care of the players at the very bottom and the very top okay and then for everybody else in the middle um that's the curve so if we do uh 37 for that and yes i did actually graph this out <laughs> but anyway i could tell you for sure like mathematically 55 62 37 is going to make that curve look pretty much exactly how we want it to look that's going to give us the most realistic salary expectations all right so now let's get into uh when the game determines a player's value right we just wanted to give the proper amount of weight uh to the following factors here that's all it is so like the first one is potential the game has always weighed that too heavily uh since i can remember it's not that bad this year like i've seen worse but still we want to lower this we want to put it down to 39 that's perfect okay now the next three i actually don't have much of a problem with all my testing all the results i got said that they just need very minor adjustments um so let's just run through them quickly we got durability we want that at 35 uh player minutes should be at 51 and then 15 is appropriate for player fame all right now i'm gonna come back uh to this last one first let's come over to the difficulty category because there's two contract related sliders there it'll make more sense to do these first um and the first one here the cpu re-signing aggressiveness we actually went over this in the last video um, if you remember we put it at 75 and we're still good with it there that's still the best place to put it um, if you didn't see that video by the way i'll put the link in the description for you check it out it's really important for player movement um, it's got everything you want to know on this slider so we don't need to go over it again here let's get to the next one it's the contract negotiation difficulty um, first thing and i tweeted about this right after i discovered it but this slider it doesn't really affect negotiations like these ones um, for contract extensions uh, for players who are already on your team okay they, they, they make that decision based on this stuff here like their ambitions what they value um, and their morale and how happy they are right so the way this works is you know if they decide that they want to do it then the slider ain't gonna matter the, the negotiation is gonna be very easy because there's no competition he's already decided that he wants to resign 
So if the money is acceptable, they'll sign. That's it for that. Now, when it comes to free agency, that's where you see this slider working more. But even those negotiations are much more about, you know, financial limitations um, and competition from other teams. All right, so the, the hard part ain't the slider setting. It's managing your money and still trying to figure out how to get all the players you want. So, you know, if you, if you got the cap space and you're willing to beat the other offers that a player has, then at the end of the day, you're probably going to get that player. So what does that mean for the settings? What, what do we want to do? Well, you know, when I was testing, my goal is to kind of counteract that. I, I want to add more depth, more nuance to, to free agency negotiations. I don't want to like, well, you know, every player just goes to the highest bidder every time. That's a lot of fun. That, that's so interesting. So, you know, I understand that's that's the biggest factor. Of course, money matters a, a ton, but, you know, there should be more to it than just that. You know, just like there is in real life. So that's where I come in with the settings to make it better. All right, so first, contract negotiation difficulty slider. Even with everything I just said, don't disregard this. It does make some difference, but I'm just telling you, you know, there, there's limitations to it. But it's still important, very important to adjust this and get it to the right level. And we want it at 78. That's going to give us the best balance. Now let's come back uh, to the contracts category. Let's hit that last slider that we left. It was actually more impactful than I thought it would be. Now, of course, it depends on, you know, the player and what's important to them. But I could tell you for sure, like, you know, for those who really value uh, playing for a winner, for example. Well, for that player, a higher setting actually does make that stuff matter more in those negotiations, and it, and it affects their decisions in a real way. So that's that, that's great. So we, of course, we want to raise this. Now we don't want to go overboard because, like I said, it, it doesn't affect all players evenly. But we do want to put this non-financial ambition slider. We're going to put it up to 68. All right. So those are the best numbers for everything love for you guys to tell me what you think so plug them in and i hope you come back next time we got all the trade sliders coming in the next video um, of course subscribe hit your notifications on best way to stay up to date so you know right away when there's something new that comes out so appreciate you guys I i'm gonna go get right back to it so i can bring you the next edition very soon of 2k with the pap what?